I'm Ken Rockwell. I just got my Nikon ZFC from my friends at B&H, from whom I've been shopping since the 1970s when I was just a little kid. I would buy my film there, mail order, when I realized that my local store couldn't possibly compete on price, either for new gear or not. I cheated. The cardboard box I just opened, that of course was sealed, but Nikon doesn't seal anything. So make sure you only buy from one of my recommended outlets like B&H, who ship from automated remote warehouses where nobody gets to touch your stuff before you do. So what have I got? Gee, this is a boring box. It is dull. In other words, no gloss, no varnish overcoating. Got hot stamping here. It's got a California 65 warning on it. This feels like something that would come inside of a kit. This is not something I'd be impressed at. But you know, today, since we all buy online, nobody buys in a store except people with rotary phones. Doesn't really matter what the box looks like. Okay, ah, ZFC US. Make sure it says US. That means it's you got a United States version. Here's the serial number, which had better match the one on my camera. Other than that, this box has little to say. Ah, here we go. Accessories included, and we're going to see that. That's the whole point of this. This is not a review. This is an unboxing, just to see what I got. Made in Thailand. Strap made in Bangladesh. Wow, they're really stepping their game up there at Nikon. Okay, so forth and so on. Let's see what we got. Now, then I'll show you some of its heritage. <laughs> is watching this unveiling, and they're sitting there going, <laughs> Thailand, sure. Not like the good old days, and Nikon made pro cameras and nothing but. Here's a warranty card. Make sure that your serial number matches what's on your camera. Make sure it says United States on your valid warranty card here, because if it doesn't, you got scammed with a gray market item, and that only applies here in the United States. If you buy something that's not a legitimate U.S. import that doesn't say U.S. on that UPC, if the serial on the UPC doesn't match the serial on your warranty card, it doesn't say U.S., that means you've got no warranty and you probably won't be able to get service or firmware updates for it. What have we got? We have two little baby manuals, one in Espanol and one in Inglés, but we don't have one in French. So they're not covering all of North America here. Inside our box, what did we get? Okay, not very impressive inside. It's just corrugated cardboard. If you drop this thing out of an airplane, there's a little bit of protection, but honestly, if this thing gets wet, this all turns to mush. It's not as protective as stuff used to be, but when Nikon made really good gear, it would be shipped in white closed cell foam that was custom cut to fit the item, so you honestly could drop it out of the back of a helicopter and uh, the gear would be fine. Not much in the way of accessories here. Gee, this used to be full. These boxes would be full of stuff. What have we got? The only things we have are, we have a battery. The battery fell out of this little bag here. That's not that somebody was going through it. It just fell out. Our little baby battery. Oh, it's so cute. Cells made in China. Oh, gosh. So it's a very high quality stuff. These will never blow up. Processed in Taiwan, meaning they assembled it into a battery in Taiwan. Recharged with lithium ion, E and ELF 25, 1120. Okay, this is the same used in the, uh, the Z50 and some other things, which is you can read at my reviews in kenrockwell.com. Little strap. I never use these straps. I use whatever other straps I happen to have lying around, which I prefer. Oh, it's got the cute little charger. These are better than the bigger chargers because it's got a flipping plug. You put this in your bag, it's not going to cut anything or get broken. And when you want to use it, boom, ready to rock. As we expect, it's worldwide. Work any place on earth. Made in China. Our adorable little camera. Let's see, wrapped up here in some... <laughs> What's this? It's some random... They just use this for packing... Okay, here's a little camera. Notice everything in this box is totally unsealed. If you were silly enough to buy this at a retail store, you probably got something that somebody else has owned and brought back after weekend and played with, and it's just a used camera, but you're paying full price. So never buy it retail. Only buy online, as I've done. Honestly, for about 40 or 50 years since the 70s when I was a little kid, nothing but online or mail order. Oh, this is very light. You know, it feels like it's trying to be metal. It could be like the Canon AE-1. The Canon AE-1 really was an awesome camera because it felt like metal, but Canon had developed for the first time this unique process where they could do some heavy plating of plastic. So it was inexpensive to manufacture with all these crazy curves, and it looked and felt a little bit like metal. That's why Canon sold millions of those things back in the 70s. Actually, I should say that I'm impressed. This feels better than I was expecting. Again, I've never seen this before in my hand. This feels really nice. ISO dial. This locks. Or the push lock. But you know what the problem is? I don't see the auto setting for ISO. This auto setting here is for shooting. Here's the shooting modes. Let's see, manual. Oh, that's those two little dots. I'm assuming that's a microphone. Oh, here we go. That's how you move it. Again, I'm just learning this. You guys are seeing this all fresh with me. The usual little strap lugs, the usual little buttons. 
flippy screen. I'm not a flippy screen fan. I'd much rather have a bigger screen. So I don't know if you can see it barely here. This screen is not all screen. Some of it's margin on the side. I'd much rather have a bigger screen that doesn't flip. But hey, that's just me. Got the usual sets of controls. These rings feel pretty good. There's no play. These are hard rings. My report will have what they're actually made out of. Here's your shutter button. It's not threaded for a cable release. This should show your F number when it's lit up. What do we got here? Got a battery door. Oh gosh, this looks like a pain. Well, yeah, how did that work? How did that work? We push that down. Yeah, it'll go down just a little bit. You push that and your battery door opens. You've got your card, you got your battery door. Good, it locks when you close it. Our serial numbers are probably, are they behind here? Yes, they are. Okay. Serial numbers should match all the paperwork. If you're buying from B&H, this stuff is going to match. But if you're dumb enough to buy it at a retail store, God only knows where your camera has been. <laughs> On the side, HDMI, USB, and mic inputs. That's a pretty full-feature camera. That's the HDMI and USB-C and a 3.5 millimeter mic input. I don't see a headphone output. Lens release. Ah, I'm sure this is a programmable function button. That's nice. This is nice because we've got two command dials here. We've got this. There's no deeper detents. You can feel that you're going to the C position. C means camera, meaning if you put it to C, you control it with this ring, which is what you do if you want to go more than plus or minus three stops, or if you want to have that set in, say, well, I don't see any memories. I don't see any U2, U3, U1 memories here. This is nice, but there's no deeper detent at zero. So if, if you're shooting, you can't just do this intuitively. You have to stop and either look at the dial on top or stop and look away from your subject in the finder and look at the indicator to see if it says plus or minus. This shutter dial is nice. If you want to set third step shutter speeds, you use that setting there. Yeah, all in all, it's a nice little camera. Your choice between the Z50 and this, which are essentially the same camera on the inside, is going to be your preference for controls. There's the little baby sensor. Look how cute that is. A <laughs> little baby camera. I think I'll prefer the Z50 controls because I can go between U1 and U2 on there. I set U1 for nature and landscapes, which is super high saturation and the vivid color mode. And I use U2, say, for people, which is a lot of different settings, different autofocus settings, just normal saturation. But let's compare it to some other things. In the beginning, there was the Nikon FM, introduced in 1977, back when Nikon was unquestionably the finest professional camera. Size-wise, of course, the FM is a full-frame camera. Well, holy cow. You know, you're not getting much size reduction by virtue of the fact that this new camera is only a half frame camera. Interesting. Okay, this is our ZFC. On top is the FM. See any resemblance? Not at all. <laughs> In the back, of course, the FM can do this. <laughs> Shoots film, full frame. Of course, the FM is all mechanical. <laughs> the FM has an aperture preview button lacking on this. FM has a normal self-timer. You just do that, and the self-timer works magically lacking on this. But it doesn't have all the controls, but they're obviously totally different cameras. The FM did not have through-the-lens flash metering. It has fewer contacts than the modern camera. That's your FM, introduced in 1977, complete with the highly sought-after wide mod strap. <laughs> worth thousands of dollars on eBay today if you could find them. Also, there was an FE, which is even more popular. It had an automatic shutter system. This is the FE2. This is the newer version. It came out in 1982. You'll see the same camera, essentially. The FE2. Well, you can read KenRockwell.com where I go through all the differences between these cameras. The FE2 looks the same. The FE2 had a higher speed shutter, so it had faster top speed, higher flash sync. And it had an electronic shutter as opposed to the mechanical shutter of the FM. More recently, introduced in 2001, this is the camera you really want to get if you want to shoot full-frame film, is the FM3A. Nikon really, full-frame, Nikon really pulled all the stops out and freaked us all out because in 2001 they came out with this new camera. The advantage of this is even without batteries, all these mechanical shutter speeds are mechanical shutter speeds. And they just work. By the way, if you're buying an old camera, here's the easiest way to test if it works well to the neophyte. Set it to one second and see if it really goes for one second. 
Perfect. That's the way it should work. My 1977 still works flawlessly, never required any service. Set it to one second. Flawlessly counts off one second. There's a mechanical buzz you're supposed to hear because it's a mechanically timed shutter. And that buzz should be even. It should just go bzzz. But if it goes bzzz, 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 then, then you need a cleaning. And honestly, if you can find a competent repairman at KenRockwell.com, just click links, click repairs. I've been using my friend Gus for about 20 years now repairing all my stuff. He does a fantastic job on these cameras, but he takes a while. But the great thing is with these old Nikons, they don't ever really need repairs. They just shoot. But what does make the FM3A crazy is, crazy good, is it has the mechanical shutter that works without a battery from one second all the way up to a four thousandth. And its auto mode works electronically. So it has the electronic automatic shutter of the FE series. So you basically got all the benefits of the FE and the FM in one brilliant camera. This also has a needle inside showing you exposure, real analog exposure needle. But hey, you didn't come here to watch that. You want to hear about the ZFC. And to learn more about the ZFC, I will have a full review here on YouTube and, of course, at KenRockwell.com. So thank you again very much for watching me unbox, not review, but simply unbox the Nikon ZFC. Thanks again for watching Ken Rockwell here on KenRockwell.com and KenRockwell.tv.